Hi everyone, it's Ren here. I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to be talking about typing and how to successfully type other people. Um, I might divide up this video in different parts depending on whether I exceed like let's say 15 or 20 minutes in time um, knowing that there are different sections that I would like to tackle. Um, the first section that we are going to be tackling which is important I think um, prior to you know prior to developing the skill of typing people easily is to understand uh, the relationship to closely develop an intimate understanding of the relationship between type and function use. I'm often told that I'm someone who can quickly recognize people's types in reality and online to an extent as well but obviously in reality it's a bit easier because uh, you get to see a fuller extent of um, you know of expression not just verbal but also physical etc relationship with one's environment online it can be quite useful to read a lot of text to be able to differentiate between an any user and an ni user t user ti user but supposing that you have a, a decent bit of conversation with uh, a person in reality that often just is enough to guess their type um, so function use why is function use important as a, as a preliminary skill to have um, well quite simply because if you if you understand how function use relates to a person's type and it's a pretty systematic relationship between the type and the function use which is why uh, MBTI is interesting if you subscribe or if you if you're if you think that Carl Jung's analytical psychology has has value because that essentially MBTI is a for, is a certain kind of formalization of, of, of Jung's work. Um, well the functions are not that difficult to recognize in people if you have a long longish kind of interaction with them. And given that they're not that difficult to recognize, all that matters is, is that you be able to figure out more or less what the first two functions are, sometimes the first three or functions are, and you can tell the person's type. And that's as simple as that. So functions and type. Well, uh, here's the thing. Let's, let's work backwards and consider the 16 types, okay? Well, the 16 types all have a function stack that's composed of four functions in hierarchical order in the, in the archetypal uh, stack in any case starting from the dominant to the auxiliary to the tertiary and to the inferior function now how does type and function relate how does type and function stack relate it's quite it's not hard basically so let's take a, a, an art you know just a generic type so if you're an extrovert, so if your first letter is E, this means that your first function is going to be an extroverted function, right? So it could be any of four. It can be either uh, SE, any, these are the two uh, extroverted perceiving functions, or FE or TE, which are the two extroverted judging functions so that's for extroversion you have one of these four okay now if you're an n okay just a second letter in your code uh, if you're an n what this means is that one either one of your two first function is n okay so you've Either your dominant function is N or your auxiliary is N. If you're an S type, either your first function is S or the second function is S. And of course, it can be either introverted or extroverted. But notice, notice something here already is that um, if you're an EN, an extroverted intuitive, 
you know that your first function is extroverted and that one of your two first functions is n, okay? And if you're an ES, you know that your first function is extroverted and that, that one of your two first function is S, an S function. Now, if you're a T-type, it means that one of your two first functions is a T function, uh, which means, for example, that if you're an EST type, uh, you're you're an extroverted, um, you're an extrovert. So your first function is an extroverted function. You know that your two first functions are going to be S and T, but you don't know which order yet. This will be revealed by whether you're a J or P type. Okay. So if you're an F type, by the way, what this means is that one of your two first functions is a feeling function, is an F function, one of your two first functions. Finally, if you're a P type, what this means is that your first extroverted function in your stack is a judgment function, hence the J. Uh, and if you're, sorry, I meant if you're a P type, you're uh, if you're a p-type, your first extroverted function is a perceiving function, so uh, it would have to be any or se. And if you're um, a j-type, the first function that you extrovert is a judging function. So fe or t, okay? And that's all that you need to know basically to guess a function stack completely okay to be able to to intuit from that little network of small enough network of rules the the function stack of a person so let's take esfj for instance let's take esfj so you know that the person is esfj how do you guess their function stack well you know the person is an e so their first function is uh, an extroverted function that's all you know for so far you know that the person is an S, so you know that one of their two first functions is an S function. Now you know that the person is an F, so you know that the one of the two first functions is an F function. So one of their, in their two first functions, pre, uh, dominant and auxiliary, you have an F function and an S function in some order. And the first function is extroverted. What does the J letter tell you, it tells you that the, fir the, the first function that is extroverted in the person's stack is a judging function. But if the first function is a, that, that is extroverted in an ASFJ is a judging function, well, that has to be the dominant function, since we already know that the first function is extroverted for an ESFJ. So we know that the first function of an ESFJ is an extroverted judging function. But we also know, given that the ESFJ is an F, that that's the first, that, that F, the judging function F, is one of the two first and the other is S. But F is the, is the judging function. Therefore, an ESFJ uses F, E as their first function, okay? because Fe is a feeling function, it's a judging function, and it's an extroverted function. So that has to be, there's no other possibility, the first function of an ESFJ. Now, you've identified Fe. Now another rule, which is very useful to know, is that your stack is always, um, is always basically in the order either extroverted function, introverted function, extroverted function, introverted function, or introverted function, extroverted function, introverted function, extroverted function. So the, an introverted function always follows an extroverted function, and an extroverted function always follows an introverted function. So in, for the ESFJ, the, 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 the auxiliary will necessarily be an introverted function. We already know that S is in the two first functions. If Fe is uh, the dominant function, necessarily, SI is the um, SI is the auxiliary function. Now, you've identified FE and SI. FE, SI. There's only one 
type that has that exhibits this pattern and it is the ESFJ okay now you, you know that the tertiary function will be extroverted and that the inferior function will be introverted right since the hierarchy is always extroverted introverted extroverted introverted so you've got ESFJ FESI you still need to figure out what the tertiary function is and what the inferior function is for an ESFJ okay well I mean here is the thing and it's uh, again th this works in every case right if you're if you're uh, a dominant feeler okay if you're a dominant feeler if, if you're a dominant judger your inferior is going to be also a judging function and and therefore your your auxiliary being a perceiving function your tertiary will also be a, a perceiving function okay so there's a symmetry there's a symmetry in terms of per perception and um, in terms of perception and judgment and that works in every case so if if an ESFJ is FESI so judging perceiving the by, by symmetry the tertiary will be perceiving and the inferior will be judging and that works in every case for any type we'll, we'll quickly do another type after the ESFJ so we know that the um, that the tertiary function is a perceiving function and that it is extroverted and we know that the, the, the inferior function is a judging function and it's introverted well it's quite simple um, we already have SI as the perceiving function that's auxiliary so therefore the perceiving function that's tertiary has to be any and the judging function that's inferior can only be TI okay given that Given that the ESFJ uses FE as their dominance, the ESFJ cannot use um, FI as their inferior, cannot use TE as their inferior, so uh, therefore they use TI, okay? So it's, it's, it's not that complicated, okay? Um, now let's go quickly through another example. Well, I'll take a type complete at random, okay? So maybe we can pick the huh, I ISTP, okay, ISTP. Well, actually, you know what? No, we'll pick INTP. Why, why would we not pick an intuitive this time? Yeah, INTP, okay? So remember the little scheme. Let's try to figure out quickly what the INTP function stack is. INTP, so we know that the first function is an introverted function. N, we know that one of the two first functions is an N function. T, we know that one of the two first functions is a T function. P, we know that the first function is a, uh, a perceiving, no, sorry, we, P means we know that the first extroverted function is a perceiving function, okay? Now, in the INTP, the first function is an introverted function. So, the, the, the first extroverted the first extroverted function of an INTP is going to be the second, right? It's going to be the, the auxiliary. You can tell that it's going to be the auxiliary since the the, the dominant is is uh, <clears throat> the dominant is an introverted function. Since an INTP is an is an N type, we know that their first that the, the N is in the two first, therefore the perceiving function that's auxiliary has to be any. But if the auxiliary is an E, well then the dominant function has to be the T function, introverted function, TI. So we've got TI and any. By symmetry, the uh, INTP uses SI as their tertiary and FE as their auxiliary. Now let's pick uh, one last type just to just, you know, complete the process. Let's, let's pick, for example, the ISTJ, right? So we know that the first function is an introverted function. We know that the in the two first functions you have S and T, and you know that the first function that's the ISTJ extroverts is a judging function. Uh, 
that comes as their second function since the first is introverted. So the extroverted judging function of an ISTJ is TE, therefore their dominance is SI by symmetry, right? So you have SI, TE by symmetry, their tertiary is FI, and their inferior is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, any. Okay? So you have SI, TE, FI, any. And maybe we can take ENFP just to completely be done and be sure that we can identify when ENFP, ENFP, so extroverted, first function, first two functions, N and F, and first extroverted function is a perceiving function. Therefore, their first function is NE, and their uh, auxiliary function can only be FI. By symmetry, their tertiary function is TE, and their inferior function is SI. And that's about it. So, Maybe in the next video, what I will be talking about in the next video that's dedicated to this particular topic is, uh, you know, once now that we know how to link a function stack and a particular type and that it's a pre the, the rules are pretty simple and once you get used to it, it might sound a bit strange and a bit confusing at first, but honestly, once it locks into your minds, you're, you're, you're sorted. Like it's never going to leave your minds, okay? So once you have that connection, all that matters is to really see what is the dominant function of a person, first of all, um, whether that person is extroverted or introverted, what's the dominant function and, and, and what's the um, auxiliary function. Because once you have the dominant and the auxiliary by symmetry, you have everything else. Okay? So, and you can then tell their uh, MBTI type. So, for example, if you meet someone who clearly exhibits FE, actually, so as a dominant function. You know that the person uses FE as a dominant function? Well, you already know that the person is uh, an EFJ actually, because EFJ means extrovert who, whose first function is a judging function and who's a feeler, okay? In, in EFJ, you already have that. Well, that means FE dominant, so ENFJ or ESFJ. And then it only remains for you to figure out whether that person is intuitive or sensing. And that is as simple for any type, okay? Just matters, what matters is to now, and I will tackle this in the, in the next video, to just get clear signs of, of each different function. There are just signs that will tell you uh, which is the dominant function of a person and also what is the auxiliary. The, the auxiliary can be a little trickier because it's not the most visible, it's, the, it's one of the most visible. Not quite the most visible, but over time you just get used to it. And then you can tell, okay, INFP, ISFP, ESFJ, ESTJ, INTJ, INFJ. It's, uh, you know, obviously it's not bulletproof. You can make mistakes, but the percentage of, the accuracy percentage, you know, I think can be over 80% easily, maybe even up to 90 if you're quite observant. Okay, see you in the next video and... I hope that this was useful as a, as a prelude to the full ability, developing the full ability to guess people's types easily. <laughs> See you guys.